The purpose of this presentation is to provide you with instructions for the entry of required data, but also to make it easier for you to support your L students. This is a visual representation of the nature of language learning and specifically how academic language relates to language development. You'll hear WIDA a lot, and WIDA just stands for World Class Instructional Design and Assessment. So, WIDA provides a research-based system of standards, assessments, and professional development. It's used in 41 states and 400 international schools. It's part of the University of Wisconsin. It started with the No Child Left Behind Act 2001. And at that time, Wisconsin University of Wisconsin got a grant to develop English language proficiency standards. And that those are the basis for the access test, which our L's take every year. So the test is just one piece of the data, but we do this test in January through March. Sometimes students are removed from gen ed classes to take the test. With the results from the Access 2.0 plugged into an algorithm, APS calculates a student's WIDA level. Excuse me. So here you can see a little pictogram of what is involved in the Access test. Listening, speaking, reading, and writing. You've got an oral language score and a literacy score, and that's really important. We'll talk more about it. This is a breakdown of students in Yorktown, level one, two, three, four, and beyond. These class, these students are in many different classes in Yorktown. Supporting your L identified students. So we want to understand the access scores we want to differentiate instruction based on our understanding of their scores. Collaborating with our um, co-teachers or collaborating with our teams and an EL specialists. We want to advocate for language learners to have an equitable access to appropriate curriculum and content. And we're going to be talking about documenting and implementing accommodations. So these are the big considerations uh, for this presentation. So what does the WIDA level in Synergy mean? The indicator helps us to understand where a student in our classroom might be in their development and understanding of language in much the same way that an IEP P indication helps us to understand students' strengths and weaknesses. The WIDA profile is a composite score measuring a student's capacity with speaking, reading, writing, and listening. And it kind of gives us a broad lens, lens with which to help them to access the general curriculum. It also helps us to better understand how the student exists in the socio-cultural context of our classroom. In order to understand the access score that you see in Synergy, it's really important to dive deeper. Keep in mind a level three, for example, or level threes, they're not all equal. We have something called the jagged learner profile. Excuse me. So I've highlighted the 3.3 composite score on the screen. You'll see that a student who is designated as a level three in your class, they may present as a six speaking. So you feel they communicate with you almost like a gen ed student, American student. 
but in fact their listening and reading scores at 2.3 indicate that their ability to understand content, to comprehend what you're doing in your class is more like a level two. Now what does a level two understand? We're gonna to get to that. This is just um, an example of 90% accuracy in comprehension, which sounds like an A, but if you take a minute to read, you'll see the missing words greatly affect your comprehension. Same thing is true at 80%, which is often considered instructional level. You don't get the gist of this article. The purpose of these slides is for you to understand a little bit how your students might feel when they are reading in your class. So how do we differentiate instruction? This um, is a list called Can Do Descriptors, which will tell you in listening, speaking, reading, and writing, what can a student at that level do. I've highlighted explain content related issues and concepts with a little star. So think of a student in your class with limited English proficiency. So if you expect a student, and sometimes teachers do, to ask a question about content, to seek out help, that's really a level four task. A level two or level one or a three in your class may not be able to communicate or even form a question to ask for help. Even some level fours with a jagged profile, if speaking is a low score for a level four, they don't have the skills to approach and form a question to ask for help. So this is where differentiating really comes into play. So on this slide, I've highlighted um, a few things that I think are really helpful. Um, it's really important to realize that social language and academic language are really different. And a child who is very chatty may not have the writing and reading skills to tackle your curriculum. So visuals, graphics, rather than full sentences, whether it's reading or producing and writing full sentences, give students an opportunity to use word banks, phrases, um, sentences with the answer missing so they can fill in a word, visuals. These are all really helpful ways to differentiate and things that L teachers do every day. So, Next, WIDA's five standards represent social, instructional, and academic purposes. So all courses are covered here. But then the academic language that students process and produce is broken down further into three dimensions. Here, more details about what a student at each level should be able to do with your class content broken into three domains, which you see at the top, linguistic uh, discourse dimension, sentence dimension, and word or phrase dimension. All of this is available to you to um, peruse later. I'm gonna move on. How do we advocate for equitable access? How do we make equitable access um, in our class? I just wanna stress that what is good for L's is good for everyone. So remember, there are things that we might look for. Um, and one thing I wanted to highlight is the comprehensible teaching language. Identify, for example, identify content vocabulary in your course that may not be common knowledge for L's and pre-teach it. That's one thing that you can do to work on a more equitable 
uh, equitable environment. Again, more look for us. What can we do to make sure our classroom is equitable? What am I doing as a teacher and what are the students doing? Some takeaways here for teachers, wait time, connections to real life and engaging elves in conversation. For students, choice, connections, but also that accessible content. The content needs to be accessible for them to actually perform. And the star, again, sentence frames, visuals, linguistically appropriate material. Next. So we have to document the accommodations that we're going to implement. Now we can do a lot to support ELLs. That's what we talked about, all those slides that I showed you. Important ideas, it's limitless. But when it comes to standardized testing, we must document certain Virginia Department of Education accommodations. They have to be available, documented, that we're doing them in our class with students or they will not be available during the SOLs. So the second box, we encourage you to engage students in the process to know what is best to meet their needs because a level six student may not find a bilingual dictionary useful. They might not use L1. So have that conversation. And finally, for duly identified students, those students that receive both English learner support and special ed services, accommodations are already documented. They were entered by Susan Harrison. So no action is necessary at this time. So this is the how to do it. And I will go a little faster because you can access Apex here on your dashboard. You can toggle back and forth with this slideshow to see the directions and get it done on your own time. But you'll be going to LEP participation on the Apex app. You'll select Yorktown and your name. So here's the nitty gritty. Um, you're gonna find the accommodations that are necessary for your class. You can see there's a lot going on in this page, but it's important to just remember on the bottom left to click the checkbox to click complete and save. Now, if there are no accommodations necessary for your specific content area, you can select, you must select the last option called participation with no accommodations. And again, remember there are three boxes you need to check to save. If you want to print, there are instructions for how to click reports and print. We have two slides to get you to the printed information. Comments, questions, we are available to help. Let's find out how you can reach us. First of all, all of these slides will be available on the Yorktown Professional Development page. And the important slides with the, for example, can-do descriptors, um, performance definitions for listening and reading, speaking and writing is all here at a click. You can see everyone in our department. We are available to help you and we will be meeting later this month for professional development to uh, help you work on this piece of providing more uh, equitable access to content and curriculum. So I want to thank you all for listening and please do get in touch with questions.